Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big P here, and still the voice of hardcore boxing. Well, it's Sunday morning, 8.18am. I'm not going to be bothering sending this to somebody to jazz up, I'm just going to put it straight out there. Hardcore, how's about that? Right, the show, last night. Right, I wasn't going to do a video on this, because... I've stopped putting videos out now about match unboxing, you know, reviews and that. I didn't do one on your five show and pff, you're called a hater if you say anything, aren't you? Porky, you're a hater! Porky, you're a hater! You just hate Eddie Hearn. You don't like to see anybody get on in life. Don't like to see anybody get on in life. Are you fucking for real? Have you just seen what's been served up? <laughs> have you just seen have you just something smells in here what it is must be Scott Quigg's burp <laughs> have you farted Scott no I burped I had a curry earlier right I've watched a Scott Quigg interview with Eddie Earn. I am on point this morning right that show last night well, 12 fights that was abysmal. Everybody won it except Scott Quigg. But everybody know, everybody knew that Eddie had John O'Carroll to win. <laughs> when when pundits start coming out with things like, he's game and he's tough and he's durable and we just don't know what Scott Quigg's got left. When pundits start coming out like that and commentators, it means get your fucking money on the other guy. That's what it means. Scott Quick, Scott Quigg last night turned up there for a pension fight, just like Crawler. That's what happened. Who knows? Maybe they even gave Scott Quigg an headline because they couldn't deliver for Callum Smith and to keep Tesco Joe sweet. But that show last night was what's wrong with boxing at the moment. For example, I'm not even going to dwell on the first two, four, six fights. But let's let's just let's just read them out anyway, right? Let's just read them out. Bradley Rea, eight and zero against Pavel Karaj, six eighteen and three. Oh my God, he'd lost his. He'd not had a win in his last five. That Karaj. So he had a win. Ibrahim Nad Nadim, 1 0 against Stefan Nicolay, 3 and 22 and 1. Good God. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at his record. Let's have a look. He lost his last. He'd not had a win in his last. Oh my God. Look at this here. 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And his last 17 fights, his only win was against a guy on his debut. Right. So that's that's the second opponent. The third one's a guy 1 and 26. He lost against Aquib Fias. I mean, what is this? Then you've got Blaine Island 2 and 0 will get 2 and 0 against Joel Sanchez. You know, four, ten, and one. You know what? What is this? What we're we being served up here? This guy has lost his last two, four, six, eight, ten. He's lost his last eleven fights. Do you know what I mean? Lost his last eleven fights. Eleven percent KO ratio. You know, it's. Uh... <laughs> it's that bad box wreck. I've not even got this guy's date of birth up. I mean, what, what, are, why, where, are they, who's doing the matching here? Right. Now, oh, the, the new matchmaker, Christian Church here, right, for matching. Well, where's Paul Reddy? Where's John Wishausen? They've all gone, aren't they? Because they don't want to be part of all this rubbish. So we've got Christian Church here, who I've never heard, matching the show, right? <laughs> These guys are matching by phone calls from people abroad. They're not fucking matching and doing their own work and watching tapes of these people. Because it is abysmal. 
It's a watered down product because they've got too many fucking dates. When you've got 60 dates a year and you've got a boxing program that's 46 weeks of the year, you've got more than one fight a week. You can't keep doing this, but like I said, it's a cash grab, isn't it, for a matchroom. They just want to get as much money in as possible. Let's go to the next one. Dalton Smith, who I've met, I know the family, against... Oh, a guy with a winning record. A guy with a winning record that lost his last three. But yeah, his record is... 10 and 3. So he's lost his last three, but he's still etched out a 10 and 3. And he and that man's name is Benson Nayila Willa. I mean, what, what what's going on here? What is going on? Then we've got Risha Mati, 6 and 0, oh, against Abdala Le Yuanja. 13-7-2. Oh, a guy with a winning record and he's won his last two. But the old, old fighters are winning. And then we've got Robbie Davis Jr., who, who everybody's telling me is world level. He's ranked number 20 on box, right? So we'll have a world ranking. Right? Robbie Davis Jr. And he's just gone to points with Damian... Leonardo Yapo. Let's have a look at him. 16, 17 and 3. The guy's not stopped anybody. In his 16 wins, he's not punched anybody. Look, KO potential, 0. Age 32. I don't want to be hard on Robbie Davis Jr. because I quite like him, actually. But what is this? This is Sky, this. This is Sky. This is supposed to be the flagship. It's watered down rubbish. Jack Cullen against to Thomas. Andres Reynosa. 13 5 and 1. He'd lost his last two. I mean, the, uh, we're not, I'm not even going to go on about this guy here. I mean, this guy here that Robbie Davis Jr. has just gone to points with, right? Robbie Davis Jr. has just gone to points with this guy here. Right, eight, eight rounds, right? Now this guy here, he's... He, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. He's, he's gone one and ten in his last eleven. I mean, what what is that? What is that? Robbie Davis Jr. deserves better than that. Whether they've just done it to get out and keep in Eddie's thoughts, I don't know. Then we've got the piece de resistance, the main course, the main, the, the main, uh, the main bitch from the hardcores. Anthony the Machine Fowler, age twenty nine. <laughs> He's now moves to twelve and one. He's fighting Theopolis Tetty. Right. Oh, I've been told there's an ice skater on the side. He goes ice skating. I mean, what on earth was that? What was that? So we'll not dwell on Anthony Fowler, but shocking. I know hardcores hate Anthony Fowler because we all know he was charging 25 quid wanted to send people messages on his phone and that. Well, there's not a long way a bit of hustling, is there? But he rubs people up wrong way, doesn't he? But Anthony Fowler... 29 years of age fighting Theopolis Tetty. Is that what it's come to for Anthony Fowler? A eh? Mr. GB team. Mr. Olympian. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm off I'm off the Anthony Fowler hype train. In fact I were off it once Fitzy smashed him about. So then we come to Yui Fury who iced Pavel Sauer. Pavel Sauer! Sauer! I don't know why that prick with, with dreads keeps reading people's name out twice. I've been told it's because somebody once did it when they said, Mickey Ward! Ward! And he's copied that. I don't know if it's an American thing, but it's fucking gimpness. Stop doing it, you prick. So, well done to you with Fury. 
So I told everybody that you would win by knockout with his new style, so well done. Then we move on to the venomous Sack Parker. Oh my fucking good God. For the vacant WBO Intercontinental Super Middleweight Bullshit title that they were saying is the number one and the number two ranked guys. Now, oh, Zach Parker, he, oh my God, he's now moved, he's now, he's now moved from 59 to 16. <laughs> he's gone from 59 to 16 in the space of 12 hours. Oh my God, look at that. Box record up early this morning, aren't they? Jesus Christ. So, Zach Parker has gone from 59 to 16 with a win over Rowan Murdoch. Who's, who drops to 31. Jeez. God. Well, they've got to justify him being, him being mandatory. And they call it... I mean, Zach Parker's putting Canelo and Billy Joe on notice. He wants the winner. Now, do you, rem do you remember in an earlier video when I said that... I said Eddie Hearn likes a safety net, doesn't he? That's why he is shitting house bricks. He's not shitting bricks. He's shitting house bricks. The breeze block ones. Shitting his pants regarding left Joshua because Bob Arum's not going to let him have a safety net of a rematch. That's why the shitting bricks. They will pay to get Tyson in the ring. Frank Warren knows this and he'll see it through to death because he's stubborn. Eddie Earns an accountant. You can read an accountant a mile off. So this is what's happened. Zach Parker. Can you see him there? Zach Parker. There you go. That's Zach Parker. He's nineteen and oh. And let's let's have a let's have a look. Let's just have a look at Zach Parker's wins. He's beat Stephen Cram <coughs> look. Let's just go through Zach Parker's last six and then 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 let then let's say does he deserve a fight with Canelo or Billy Joe? Right. Matinga Kinderly, nine and six. This is all in front of your eyeballs, yeah? This is why I fucking get revved up. Right, you ready? Are you ready for this? Right, Matinga Kindele, nine and six. Adasat Rodriguez, sixteen and six and two. Jayard Ajitovic, thirty-one and seventeen and one. Daryl Williams, seventeen and zero. Split decision, life and death. I thought he lost. Stephen Cramber, eight and four. Rowan Murder, which oh, were awful, twenty-four and one. And now he's in position with his padded record, nineteen and zero, to fight Billy Joe when Billy Joe loses on points to Canelo. Billy Joe will be brought back with the WBO. He will be put in at number one or number two, and he will fight this guy here. The amazing Zach Parker with his 68.42 percentage KO ratio of who? Who? You've just seen his last six. You've just seen his last six. His best win is Daniel Williams, a life and death that I thought he got beaten. Now, that is it. This man is going to be fighting Billy Joe for vacant bell, or... If Eddie Hearn gets lucky and, he, and, and and they decide that Canelo wants to have an easy defence, they'll just feed him to Canelo and give him life-changing money. But what's going to happen is, good old Zach Parker against Canelo, he'd get hurt, wouldn't he? He'd get hurt against Billy Joe as well. It'd, it'd be a, look, somebody's going to get hurt with all this craziness. It's utter fucking craziness of putting people into position. It's just starting to annoy me. Starting to fucking annoy me. And then we come to the main event, right? I mean, Scott Quigg. 32 minutes, 14 seconds. He lost every second of the fight. He should have been pulled out after round seven. 
I mean, they're bigging up John O'Carroll as Sweet P. Williams, aren't they? Whitaker. They're bigging him up as Pernell Whitaker. He got beat against Tevin Farmer, didn't he? Right? And Tevin Farmer's no great shakes. But they were bigging him up as Pernell Whitaker in there last night. Rough, tough, rugged, Scott Quigg is gay. Look, let me tell you this. Carl Froch once told me this many years ago. Before he fought Albert Rabaki, he once said to me, Do you know what, Porky? Do you know the training? The training will take the average man so far if you're prepared to put the graft in. The rest is up to you. You know, if you want to be a boxer, the training will take you so far, you've got to get every ounce out of it. And Scott Quigg, as Eddie Hearn said here, they've got every ounce out in his career. But. Scott Quigg is very, very, very limited. He's very tough and stubborn. Technique-wise, he's a 1 out of 10, isn't he? He's a 1 out of 10. Fitness-wise, he's a 10, isn't he? Toughness-wise, he's a 10. So they have to be saved from themselves, don't they? But Scott Quigg has been out of the ring 18 months. Right, let me just show you here now, right? Let me just show you some, some here. All you fucking idiots who keep commenting and sending me emails who don't know how the fucking game works, who hang out the back of anybody match room. Let me just tell you this last night. Scott Quigg headlined in his own town last night, but he were the B-side. He were the B-side. Joe Gallagher knew that. They were on a set fee. There were no pay-per-view to sell. He knew Scott Quigg were there to lose last night. That's why he's been fucking quiet all the way through. Joe Gallagher knows boxing. All right. Scott Quigg were there to lose. So let's have a look at Scott Quigg's record. This is what the ma this kid's got out of this career. Started off with Brian Hughes, who were with Robin Reed at the time. Who, who Robin Reed had. Scott Quigg's been at it since 2007. But let me tell you this. Very fit kid and an hard trainer, but who's his best win? Who? Who would you say is his best win? When you go through, it's not John, John O'Carroll because he lost. Briones, 29 and 7. No, Oscar Valdez, he got beat. When he stepped up, he's been beat. Yefimovic, let's have a look at him. No, he'd be in European level. European level. The continent is a continental man. Quigg's basically a continental man, isn't he? You go through Scott Quigg's record. I don't want to dissect it too much because you know he'll be at home now playing with his crayons, won't he? But let's have it right. A nursing and broken nose. I'm not going to go in too harsh on him. Right. Kiko Martinez, right? He's a former world champion. Of Scott Quigg's beat. Right, Kiko Martinez, 32 and 5. When Scott Quigg got to Kiko Martinez, he were over ill. Right, it was five years ago when he got to him. And since Scott Quigg got to him, Martinez has gone 8, 1, 2, 3... 8, 3 and 2 since Quigg got to him. So basically he was a shot fighter. That's his best win. Uh, Carl Frampton beat him. Schooled him. What else am I looking at here? Stefan Jimoye. Come on. Who are we, who are we looking at here? Yolandris Solis. He drew against him, didn't he? Then held the fucking belt up afterwards. And let's have it right. He were regular belt, wasn't it? He were upgraded, wasn't he? Scott Quigg were upgraded from interim. Look, you see where I'm coming from here? Look, interim. See that? Interim. Interim. Then he had a keep busy fight. Then they upgraded him. Look. Now let me just show you something here for all you fucking idiots. Let me just show you something here. Right, I'm going to show you something. I'm just going to educate all you gimps from Gimpville Island. Right, and there's a lot of you who live on Gimpville Island. Loads of you. Right, Louis Ortiz. Let me have a look here. Let me just go down here and explain something to you. Louis Ortiz, right, beat Bryant Jennings for the interim. Look at that. Interim. World title. He still had that in his locker, right? 
and look what happens he has a fight in Washington a keep busy one just like Quiggin after his interim and then he goes to Eddie Hearn but at the time Eddie Hearn had Anthony Joshua and people like me were screaming we were screaming for the Joshua Ortiz fight <clears throat> we all said Eddie Hearn's a fucking genius he's going to put Ortiz an undefeated man at the time he's going to put him in with Joshua and we're all excited and look what happened he gave him Malik Scott and he swapped the interim instead of upgrading him to the world champion regular belt he went backwards to an intercontinental they parked him up on the shelf and kept him away from Joshua look you see that there interim why won't he upgraded to regular for the Malik Scott fight well that was the word they, they made him go backwards to keep him away from Joshua. And then he went even further backwards after winning that fight. Well, look. He fought David Allen, a journeyman. Right? For no belt. And look. Look after that. The WBA were gone. Look. He wasn't even in the picture. He had to go the other route. The WBC route. Twice. That's the point I'm trying to make about power behind the scenes so all you gimps from gimpville fucking island fuck off you got a problem come see me march 27th ponds ford i'll be ringside i'll take any of you outside you fucking gimps come see me if you got a fucking problem all right fucking idiot sending me fucking stupid emails look it's like i've just said to you scott quig got the most out of his career He's 31, but he's at that age where he's had a lot of punishment. Not everybody is the same. They don't all they don't all evade punches now. People keep saying to me, Oh, Porky, Josh Wales older than Scott Quigg. He's six months older. But yeah, he's been matched better, hasn't he? Hey, Josh Wales will win a world title this year in IBO. What are you all going to say then, all you fucking gimps? All you Scott Quigg fans who are abusing me. Like I've just said to you, Scott Quigg got the most out of his career, but if you drop down to featherweight, Josh Whaler smash him to bits. Smash him to fucking bits. All right, you're a Finnish fighter. And what's he fucking doing? Not fighting in England for three years. When was the last time he fought in England, him? Scott Quigg's not... La Scott Quigg for VRL Simeone. Three years ago in England at Wembley. And then he's n and he's not fought for 18 months. He last fought 18 months ago in Boston, America. And yet he's fucking headlining at Manchester. What the fuck's going on? Fuck, fuck, fuck. It's fucking wrong. Now, Scott Quigg's now obviously retired. I don't know what he's going to do without boxing because boxing's been his life, hasn't it? I mean, for the last, what is he, 31 year old? So for the last 27 years... Every Christmas, he's opened his Christmas present from his mum. And do you know what it were? One of them speed balls that they give to little young kids. You know, that you eat in your bedroom that's on like a stalk. Scott Quigg's been knocking one of them about. He gets one every single year. You know, it's... Uh, look, Scott Quigg's gone four and two, I know, since Frampton lost. So he's had six fights in four years. Look, it's all there in fucking black and white. Six fights in four years. That were awful from Eddie Hearn last night. But it was a pension fight, wasn't it? It was Joe Gallagher ringing the best out of fucking him as he could. And look at that. I even had it on my notes. Zach Parker. 59 box wreck. He's now number fucking 16. Eh? Number 16. This is what you're up against. The manipulating the fucking box wreck rankings already. Everything's being manipulated. That's what's going on. That is what's going on and it's shocking. It is absolutely shocking. But like I've just said to you there last night. How many fights can we all think of that had... There were 18 months. Where the fighter's 18 months. Not four. And then he's come back and headline. Vladimir Klitschko against Joshua. Robin Reed against Carl Frotch. Robin Reed, I think, had been out 18 months, but don't quote me on that. Uh, in fact, I will have a quote me on that because he might have had a, just a Jesse Vargas fight in between. I think he just had one fight in, in the middle of 18 months. 
Let's have a look, Robin Reed, Frotch, Frotch, Jamie Umbler, hang on a minute, Jesse Brinkley, ah yeah, Jeff Lacey, oh so it were, two year, three month out the ring, but he had a, he, the slip Jesse Brinkley and yeah, because that's the other for a British title, won it, so I was wrong on that, so basically it's just Vladimir Klitschko, and Scott Quigg and Carroll. The only two fights that I could come up with were somebody's been out ring 18 months and they've come back. Now, Vladimir against Joshua, he, he would dug up one for Joshua. Now, Scott Quigg would done up for John O'Carroll. That's why I'm saying to you people on here, Scott Quigg is from Manchester, right? Well, he's from Berry, isn't he? And I know some nice people in Berry. Shout out to Dave and Rick and Frank Smith. The, the Berry lads, you want to fuck about down Berry, you will get a slap. I've actually been to Quiggy's Chippy, not bad chips. But, point I'm trying to, point I'm trying to make is this. Scott Quigg was the B-side last night. The B-side. And, he, and he's in his own, air, own area fighting and he's B-side. He's there to lose. So even though there were one loss for home fighters last night, really, Eddie Irwin were in the John O'Carroll corner. And he sees the future in John O'Carroll, not Scott Quigg. Scott Quigg's there just to get a pension payoff because he's crawlers and mate and all that. And he's been with, been with Matt Shum years. But like I've just said there, they needed an, appoint, they needed an opponent for John O'Carroll, who's not Pernell Whitaker. It's, John O'Carroll reminds me of that guy. I forgot his name. Let me have a look here. I forgot his name, but he's Irish. He's Irish, and uh, I'll tell you his name in a minute. Gary O'Sullivan. Gary O'Sullivan, that's him there. That, that, you see him there? Is it him? Spike O'Sullivan. He reminds me of him, John O'Carroll. You know, a bit, you know, crazy moustache, crazy beards, and they think, they have this reputation because they're from Ireland that the massive ticket sellers and they'll have a country behind them. So the promoters tend to get by these people, behind these people, which is fair enough. But John O'Carroll is not Pernell Whitaker, Adam Smith. Stop lying to yourself, going on about things like that. The only thing he's got in common with Pernell Whitaker is the fact that he's a Southpaw, and that is it. That is it. He's just beat a guy with 11 losses after Tevin Farmer. So stop kidding yourself and stop kidding the fucking fans, Adam Smith. Coming out with Pernell Whitaker shit. So, but utter, non utter nonsense from that last night. Do you know what? I don't normally agree with Dave Caldwell, right? But Dave Caldwell nailed it last night on there. So I'll have to give him a bit of respect. My mate Chris Smedley won't be happy about that. But... Dave Coldwell told it straight last night. Told it straight. But Joe Gallagher, Joe Gallagher should be ashamed. Why don't he pull fighters out? He didn't pull Marcus Morrison out in fights. And I mean, he let Paul Smith get a shallack in against Andre Ward. Because Joe Gallagher thinks, well, they might go lucky punching. Save your fucking fighter, Joe. Don't think yourself. All right. So that's about it, really. Uh I just want to blow a bit of steam off. And we've blown a bit of steam off. And like I said, if anybody's got a fucking problem, 27th of March, Ponds 4, I'll be there ringside. Come see me. Nobody seems to fucking turn up. We're all full of shit. All you gimps who keep sending me emails, fucking hell. Got people sending me photographs on emails now and where I live. Fucking brilliant. Come and bring milk in. Coming in for a cuppa. But that's about it really, so so I'm just going to put this out now. But the actual show last night, I'll tell you what that show was last night. You ready? This is what that show was last night. That show last night was like that. My Rocky's just left, but he's house trained. Just like Scott Quigg, house trained. So, alright, put that in there. So peace out, keep on trucking, keep sporting boxing. Shout out to Innovation Alloys, the South Yorkshire Packaging.